counterfactual thinking is a concept in psychology that involves the human tendency to create possible alternatives to life events that have already occurred, something that is contrary to what actually happened. Counterfactual thinking is exactly as it states. Counter to the facts, these thoughts consist of the what if, and the if I had only that occur when thinking of how things could have turned out differently. Overview. Counterfactual literally means contrary to the facts. A counterfactual thought occurs when a person modifies a factual prior event and then assesses the consequences of that change. A person may imagine how an outcome could have turned out differently if the antecedents that led to that event were different. For example, a person may reflect upon how a car accident could have turned out by imagining how some of the factors could have been different. For example, if only I hadn't been speeding. These alternatives can be better or worse than the actual situation, and in turn give improved or more disastrous possible outcomes. If only I hadn't been speeding, my car wouldn't have been wrecked or if I hadn't been wearing a seat belt, I would have been killed. Counterfactual thoughts have been shown to produce negative emotions, however they may also produce functional or beneficial effects. Ideas that create a more negative outcome are downward counterfactuals and those thoughts that create a more positive outcome are considered upward counterfactuals. These counterfactual thoughts, or thoughts of what could have happened, can affect people's emotions, such as causing them to experience regret, guilt, relief, or satisfaction. They can also affect how they view social situations, such as who deserves blame and responsibility. History The origin of counterfactual thinking has philosophical roots and can be traced back to early philosophers such as Aristotle and Plato, who pondered the epistemological status of subjunctive suppositions and the non-existent but feasible outcomes. In the 17th century, the German philosopher Leibniz argued that there could be an infinite number of alternate worlds, so long as they were not in conflict with laws of logic. The well-known philosopher Nicholas Riescher has written about the interrelationship between counterfactual reasoning and modal logic. The relationship between counterfactual reasoning based upon modal logic may also be exploited in literature or Victorian studies. Painting and Poetry Ruth M. J. Byrne in The Rational Imagination How people create alternatives to reality propose that the mental representations and cognitive processes that underlie the imagination of alternatives to reality are similar to those that underlie rational thought including reasoning from counterfactual conditionals. More recently, counterfactual thinking has gained interest from a psychological perspective. Cognitive scientists have examined the mental representations and cognitive processes that underlie the creation of counterfactuals. Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky pioneered the study of counterfactual thought showing that people tend to think, if only, more often about exceptional events than about normal events. Many related tendencies have since been examined, e.g., whether the event is an action or an action, whether it is controllable, its place in the temporal order of events, or its causal relation to other events. Social psychologists have studied cognitive functioning and counterfactuals in a larger social context. Early research on counterfactual thinking took the perspective that these kinds of thoughts were indicative of poor coping skills, psychological error or bias, and generally dysfunctional in nature. As research developed, a new wave of insight beginning in the 1990s began taking a functional perspective, believing that counterfactual thinking served as a largely beneficial behavioral regulator. Although negative effect and biases arise, the overall benefit is positive for human behavior. Activation There are two portions to counterfactual thinking. First, there is the activation portion. This activation is whether we allow the counterfactual thought to seep into our conscious thought. The second portion involves content. This content portion creates the end scenario for the antecedent. 
The activation portion leads into the mystery of why we allow ourselves to think of other alternatives that could have been beneficial or harmful to us. It is believed that humans tend to think of counterfactual ideas when there were exceptional circumstances that led to an event, and thus could have been avoided in the first place. We also tend to create counterfactual ideas when we feel guilty about a situation and wish to exert more control. For example, in a study by Davis et al., parents who suffered the death of an infant were more likely to counterfactual think 15 months later if they felt guilty about the incident or if there were odd circumstances surrounding the mortality. In the case of a death of natural causes, parents tended to counterfactual think to a lesser extent over the course of time. Another factor that determines how much we use counterfactual thought is how close we were to an alternative outcome. This is especially true when there is a negative outcome that was this close to a positive outcome. For example, in a study by Myers Levy and Maharswaran, subjects were more likely to counterfactual think alternative circumstances for a target if his house burned down three days after he forgot to renew his insurance versus six months after he forgot to renew his insurance. Therefore, the idea that a final outcome almost occurred plays a role in the reason we emphasize that outcome. Functional basis it can be wondered why we continue to think in counterfactual ways if these thoughts tend to make us feel guilty or negatively about an outcome. One of the functional reasons for this is to correct for mistakes and to avoid making them again in the future. If a person is able to consider another outcome based on a different path, they may take that path in the future and avoid the undesired outcome. It is obvious that the past cannot be changed, however, it is likely that similar situations may occur in the future, and thus we take our counterfactual thoughts as a learning experience. For example, if a person has a terrible interview and thinks about how it may have been more successful if they had responded in a more confident manner, they are more likely to respond more confidently in their next interview. Risk aversion Another reason we continue to use counterfactual theory is to avoid situations that may be unpleasant to us which is part of our approach and avoidance behavior. Often, people make a conscious effort to avoid situations that may make them feel unpleasant. However, despite our best efforts, we sometimes find ourselves in these unpleasant situations anyway. In these situations, we continue to use counterfactual thinking to think of ways that that event could have been avoided and in turn to learn to avoid those situations again in the future. For example, if a person finds hospitals to be an uncomfortable place but find themselves in one due to cutting their finger while doing dishes, they may think of ways they could have avoided going to the hospital by tending to the wound themselves or doing the dishes more carefully. Behavior intention We continue to use counterfactual thoughts to change our future behavior in a way that is more positive or behavior intention. This can involve immediately making a change in our behavior immediately after the negative event occurred. By actively making a behavioral change, we are completely avoiding the problem again in the future. An example is forgetting about Mother's Day and immediately writing the date on the calendar for the following year as to definitely avoid the problem. Goal-directed activity in the same sense as behavior intention. People tend to use counterfactual thinking in goal-directed activity. Past studies have shown that counterfactuals serve a preparative function on both individual and group level. When people fail to achieve their goals, counterfactual thinking will be activated. When they engage in upward counterfactual thinking, people are able to imagine alternatives with better positive outcomes. The outcome seems worse when compared to positive or alternative outcomes. This realization motivates them to take positive action in order to meet their goal in the future. Markman, Gavansky, Sherman, and McMullen identified the repeatability of an event as an important factor in determining what function will be used. 
for events that happen repeatedly there is an increased motivation to imagine alternative antecedents in order to prepare for a better future outcome for one-time events. However, the opportunity to improve future performance does not exist. So it is more likely that the person will try to alleviate disappointment by imagining how things could have been worse. The direction of the counterfactual statement is also indicative of which function may be used. Upward counterfactuals have a greater preparative function and focus on future improvement, while downward counterfactuals are used as a coping mechanism in an effective function. Furthermore, additive counterfactuals have shown greater potential to induce behavioral intentions of improving performance. Hence, counterfactual thinking motivates individuals to making goal-oriented actions in order to attain the goal in the future. Collective action on the other hand, at a group level counterfactual thinking can lead to collective action. According to Malaysia and Catalani, political activists exhibit group commitment and are more likely to re-engage in collective action following a collective defeat and show when they are engaged in counterfactual thinking. Unlike the cognitive processes involved at individual level, abstract counterfactuals lead to an increase in group identification, which is positively correlated with collective action intention. The increase in group identification impacts on people's effect. Abstract counterfactuals also led to an increase in group efficacy. Increase in group efficacy translates to belief that the group has the ability to change outcomes in situations. This in turn motivates group members to make group-based actions to attain the goal in the future. Benefits and consequences when thinking of downward counterfactual thinking or ways that the situation could have turned out worse. People tend to feel a sense of relief. For example, if after getting into a car accident somebody thinks, at least I wasn't speeding, then my car would have been totaled. This allows for consideration of the positives of the situation, rather than the negatives. In the case of upward counterfactual thinking, people tend to feel more negative effect about the situation. When thinking in this manner, people focus on ways that the situation could have turned out more positively. For example, if only I had studied more, then I wouldn't have failed my test. Current research, as with many cognitive processes in the brain, Current and upcoming research seeks to gain better insight into the functions and outcomes of how we think. Research for counterfactual thinking has recently been investigating various effects and how they might alter or contribute to counterfactual thinking. One study by Rim and Somerville investigated the distance of the event in terms of time and how this length of time can affect the process by which counterfactual thinking can occur. Their results showed that people generated more downward counterfactuals about recent versus distant past events, while they tended to generate more upward counterfactuals about distant versus recent past events, which was consistent in their replications for social distance as well. They also examined the possible mechanism of manipulating social distance and the effect this could have on responding to negative events in either a self-improvement or self-enhancement motivations. Recent research by Scholl and Sazenberg looked to determine how perceived power in the situation can affect the counterfactual thought and process associated to understanding future directions and outlooks. The research examined how manipulating the perceived power of the individual in the given circumstance can lead to different thoughts and reflections, noting that demonstrated that being powerless diminished self-focused counterfactual thinking by lowering sense personal control. These results may show a relationship between how the self perceives events and determines the best course of action for future behavior types. Upward and downward upward counterfactual thinking focuses on how the situation could have been better. Many times, people think about what they could have done differently. For example, if I started studying three days ago, instead of last night, I could have done better on my test. Since people often think about what they could have done differently, it is not uncommon for people to feel regret during upward counterfactual thinking. 
downward counterfactual thinking focuses on how the situation could have been worse. In this scenario, a person can make themselves feel better about the outcome because they realize that the situation is not the worst it could be. For example, I'm lucky I earned a C on that. I didn't start studying until last night. Additive, subtractive, a counterfactual statement may involve the action or an action of an event that originally took place. An additive statement involves engaging in an event that did not originally occur whereas a subtractive statement involves removing an event that took place. Additive counterfactuals are more frequent than subtractive counterfactuals. Additive and upward counterfactual thinking focuses on what else could I have done to do well? Subtractive and upward counterfactual thinking focuses on what shouldn't I have done so I could do well? In contrast, an additive and downward scenario would be, if I went drinking last night as well, I would have done even worse. While a subtractive and downward scenario would be, if I didn't start studying two days ago, I would have done much worse. Self versus other this distinction simply refers to whether the counterfactual is about actions of the self or someone else's actions. Self-counterfactuals are more prevalent than other person-focused counterfactuals. Construal level theory explains that self-counterfactuals are more prevalent because the event in question is psychologically closer than an event in which others are involved.